not only works in our hearts, but it takes background from the enemy. And so today, Lord, we pray that you would bless us as you encourage us, empower us, and remind us of the amazing blessing that your word takes background from the devil and all of his evil demons who strive to deceive, to divide, and destroy. And so, Lord, may your word work powerfully in our hearts. And it's in your saving name we pray. Amen. It's amazing to me the amount of quotable quotes from Vince Lombardi. Anybody know any of those quotable quotes? One of the quotes that he has is that he compares life and football to be a game of inches. In one of his most famous speeches, he says that the, the football is like a game of inches because Those who win the inches become the champion. And so he would always remind his teams, you want to claw and fight for every inch, whether it's defensively or offensively, to take back ground from your opponent. Because those who gain the yards, gain the first downs, gain the touchdowns, gain the victory. That was the point that he was trying to make. But he also made the point that yeah, football and life are a lot alike in that very same speech. And would you agree that for you and me, that that is so true that our life is not a game of inches, it's a battle of inches. It's a war of inches. It's clawing to take back ground from the enemy, the devil. Do you realize that the devil wants to claim your heart That he wants to claim your soul and your body. That he wants you to suffer hell. The same fate that he has coming. That's what he wants for you because he hates you. He is the enemy. He is the one who, as we just heard in these verses in Matthew 16, that he is part of what we would call the gates of Hades, the gates of hell. The devil and his demonic cohort want nothing but hell for you and for me. Now, what's interesting is that when you take a look at these verses in Matthew chapter 16, you see that when we talk about the gates of Hades, sometimes the picture is that the church is the fortress, 
and that the devil and his demons are coming against you and me, so we need to stand firm, stand our ground, and there's nothing wrong with that picture. In fact, that's a very fitting picture. However, that's not what Jesus says here. That's not at all what Jesus is saying here. What Jesus is picturing is for us as the church, not being on the defensive, but on the offensive. He wants us to picture coming against the gates of Hades and taking back ground from the devil. Can you say this with me? The phrase that's on the screen, the word takes back ground. You ready? One, two, three. The word takes back ground. Now that's incredibly important for you and me to keep in mind because as we look at the world around us, does it sometimes feel like we're on a losing cause? When you just take a look at the, the political climate, when you take a look at the landscape around the world, when you take a look at how many people are coming against Jesus and his people, it may seem like we're losing ground. But Jesus says, uh-uh. The word takes back ground. Say it with me. The word takes back ground. Now the question is, How? Well, Jesus alludes to that here when he says uh, to Peter, after Peter made this beautiful confession, Jesus had asked them, hey, who do you say I am? And of course, you know, when they were talking about what other people say, there are all these different views about Jesus even then. And isn't it true? The same is true today. There's all these different views about who Jesus is. Some say he's a great guy. Some say he's a great prophet. Still others say he is true God like you and me. That, that's what we believe. We believe Jesus is true God and true man who came to this world to be our Savior, to live and die and rise again for our forgiveness, for our certainty of heaven. That's all that Jesus came. That's what we believe. But Jesus makes this amazing statement when he said to Peter that upon this rock I will build my church. Now what was he talking about? What's the rock? The rock is none other than the statement that Peter had made about Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Son of the living God, that Jesus is the one who would earn our forgiveness, that Jesus is the one who makes our destiny as certain as ever of eternal life in heaven. That's what Jesus does. That's who Jesus is. You see, say it with me. The Word takes back ground. The Word made flesh gave his life to take back the ground of hell that you and I deserve. That's what Jesus, the word, came for you and me to do. Upon this rock, I build my church. Do you realize that every time that the Holy Spirit is working, whether it's through the sacramental word, baptism or the Lord's Supper, or through the oral word, or through the written word when we read it, that the Holy Spirit is at work bringing people to faith, sustaining people in the faith, strengthening people in the faith, that the Holy Spirit is at work. And the Holy Spirit builds his church upon that statement of who Jesus is as our Lord and Savior. And every time that the Holy Spirit brings someone to faith, you realize he's snatching someone from the gates of Hades. He's snatching someone from the fires of hell. Now I want to ask you, who in your life is in danger of the fires of hell? Who in your life is a person who does not have the same hope, the same peace, the same joy in the midst of life's ups and downs, the same forgiveness, the same love, the amazing grace that our God... Do you know of anyone in your life right now that you can name who doesn't have that because they don't have Jesus? One of the, the great resources that we want to give you, if you didn't notice it on your way in, is there's this little card that has one, two, three, four, five questions on it, and it's part of what we call joining Jesus on his mission. And these are a great reminder not only of what can I learn from the word as I apply it to myself, but what also can I learn from the word in how I view others around me? Am I noticing what's going on in their lives? 
Am I noticing the people in my life who don't have Jesus in their life? This is a great resource. Make use of it if you haven't done so already. But here's the thing. How do I share my faith comfortably with someone? Have you ever asked that question? Have you ever thought, boy, I really should say something right now, but I really don't, I don't know what to say. Has that ever entered into your mind? Mine too, just so we're clear. Same here. And I just want to introduce, I'm, I'm a guy of acronyms, so sorry ahead of time here, but I love my acronyms because they help me remember, and I hope they do for you too. And I just want to share with you just one method of how we can grow in our ability to share the good news about Jesus with others so that the word, say it with me, the word takes back ground. Every time we share Jesus with somebody, the Holy Spirit has the opportunity to take back ground in that person's heart. So how do we do that? Well, here's the acronym. Ready? Oils. Okay? Oils. I know. It's not essential oil. Actually, it is essential oils. Just not the kind you think. Okay? So oils. The O stands for observe. Observe what's going on in the lives of the people around you. What do you notice? Are you noticing someone who's going through a time of tension or transition or trouble in their life? What are you observing in, among your coworkers, your family members, your relatives, acquaintances, neighbors? What are you noticing in their life? Observe. The I stands for invite. Invite a conversation. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing really? See the, see the difference? Invite a conversation. And then the L stands for listen. Listen well. Make note of some of the things that they may be saying that you may want to encourage them on or maybe a doorway that's an opening for you to share. And this is the S of oils. So observe, invite, listen, share. The S stands for sharing what you know to be true about Jesus. What has Jesus done for you? Share it with them because we all have so many things in common, right? O-I-L-S. Observe, invite, listen, share. Now, if you're thinking, I'm still not sure about this, Pastor, that's okay. Because coming up in the end of October, perhaps early November, we are going to be offering a class here that is titled, Love Where You Live. Love Where You Live. It's part of our, our, the Mount Academy that we're so excited to be sh- able to share with our, our members here and our guests here. And the reason for doing so is, again, say it with me, the Word takes back ground. God the Holy Spirit is at work right now, taking back ground. And we, when we go outside of these four walls and we get to talk about Jesus with other people, say it with me, the Word takes back ground. Because that's what Jesus wants. The gates of Hades can't overcome it. Jesus already won the war. My friends, we have the privilege of getting the word out. In the words of uh, Ty Tribbett, who I don't know if some of you probably know him, he's a, a famous gospel singer, gospel writer, gospel song writer. And this is what he says as we close out. The devil thought he had you, but God said, be still. This battle is not yours to fight, but mine. And my friends, Jesus won the war. The battle is now for you and me to remember that the word takes back ground. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, let's remind ourselves of the privilege that we have as a community for the community here at Mount Lebanon. You'll see that there is a responsive section. You can follow along either in your program or you can follow along on the screen as well as we remind ourselves that we are a community for the community, which means we get to take background for the king in sharing the word with others. Mount Lebanon is and has carried out ministry here on the north side of Milwaukee since 1926. This is why we are here. We are a community for the community with Jesus as our heartbeat. This is what we desire to do. We share God's word to connect people to Christ and to our caring Christian community. This is what is important to us. These are the things we value. We hold to one faith. This means that 
We will hold tenaciously to his teaching. We will teach his word boldly. We will do whatever we can to reach people with it. We are one ministry. This means that we will not let anything divide us. God's word will unite us. We won't always do what I like, but we will do all things in love. We are one family. This means that we will walk together in faith and in life. We will joyfully and eagerly welcome everyone into the family. Finally, though we are one, we are also many. We are many parts. This means that we will partner to do this work God has given us. We will unleash each other to serve him here, there, and everywhere.